Mystery Mine at Dollywood was the first Gerslauer Eurofighter in America, and it still may be their weirdest installation. These rides are typically budget-friendly thrill coasters for smaller parks, but Dollywood themed this coaster to the nines. While Mystery Mine does a lot well, it also has some flaws. But is it ultimately a good ride experience? Find out in this review. Gerslauer debuted the Eurofighter in 2003 with Vilsvina at Bon Bon Land. This coaster model aimed to provide serious thrills in a small footprint. The signature element was the Beyond Vertical Plunge, and this model has taken off like wildfire, particularly for smaller parks. But the first one in the United States went to a major chain park in Dollywood. Mystery Mine would open in 2007 at a cost of $17.5 million, making it the largest single investment for a Hershen Park at the time. While the ride would only feature 1,805 feet, or 550 meters of track, the ride would feature extensive theming and special effects rarely seen in a thrill coaster. When the ride opened, its 95 degree plunge earned it the record for the steepest drop in North America. The ride also had a slightly different layout. For the 2021 season, the ride's first half was modified. Originally, the coaster had a near vertical plunge off the bridge, followed by a horseshoe turn and a 270 degree twist into another brake run. In 2021, this section was toned down and simplified. You now turn 90 degrees off the bridge and head down a less steep plunge. You then twist 180 degrees into the very same brake run as before. So why was this change done? Mystery Mine has developed a reputation as a rough ride over the years. The sudden changes in direction can easily lead to headbanging. Dollywood themselves said the change was to make Mystery Mine smoother. It's no secret the original drop was a shockingly jarring moment, and the sudden changes of direction on the horseshoe turn and 270 degree twist could cause headbanging. The new drop isn't quite as wild, and you have less changes of direction, so this part is more comfortable. However, that doesn't address the rest of the ride, which can still bash your head. I wish Dollywood instead gave Mystery Mine new trains with lap bars. All the older Eurofighters like Mystery Mine had over the shoulder restraints. These restraints have some padding by the ears, but unless you lean forwards, you're probably going to hit your head at points. I have to ride this coaster defensively, and I know I'm not the only one to do so. The newer Eurofighters and Infinity Coasters feature lap bars. These trains are a major improvement. Ridding these rides of headbanging makes them far more enjoyable. It also accentuates the already strong airtime and hang time. There was another change to the theming in 2020. Mystery Mine originally had some decorative chains on the bridge, but one of them fell and struck a few guests. Out of an abundance of caution, these chains have not come back since the incident. But Mystery Mine still has plenty of theming. The focal point is the giant mine shaft. It has a perfectly rustic feel to it. This building houses two extended indoor sections, plus the station. Then you also have this animatronic vulture by the main entrance who sings and heckles to prospective riders. This beloved bird had disappeared for a while due to technical issues, but he was going strong in my most recent visits. Most of the thrill elements can be seen from the midway. The first half is a slow mess of track, while the finale features two mesmerizing, hang time filled inversions. This coaster looks exciting, and unfortunately, you're probably going to have to wait a bit to ride it. Mystery Mind does not have the best capacity. Each train only seats a maximum of 8 riders across two rows of four. Dollywood is usually 5-7 to seven trains in the course at once, but stacking is pretty common. The employees can check the restraints quickly because they consist of just a simple over-the-shoulder restraint. The biggest issue seems to be the time it takes for guests to navigate through the narrow vehicles and store their loose articles on the small ride platform. As for seat selection, I prefer the front ever so slightly for the improved view. I don't find the forces or smoothness to vary between the front and back. Dollywood assigns rows, but they will typically honor seating requests if you ask nicely. This next part of the review will go element by element through the layout. There will be spoilers for the theming and indoor elements, so please feel free to skip ahead to the time shown on the screen if you want to avoid these and jump to the outdoor bits. Once the bell chimes, you roll forwards and head down a fun first drop. It's not overly tall, nor does it offer any airtime, but it's steeper than you expect and it has some good zip to it. Plus, I like the ominous lighting and steam that shoots through the track to heighten the sense of danger. You then have a slow series of turns through the mine. You hear this creepy melody in the background. 
It's mostly in the dark, but you do pass some bats. This leads to a small but jerky drop underneath some spikes. I like the visual, but this is the first hint that Mystery Mine may not be the smoothest ride. You then hit some brakes, round a corner, and head up a vertical lift hill out of the mine shaft. And I really like the theming around the ladder. You have a few props and signs to read before you start climbing towards the sky. The outdoor segment starts with these small and slow dips towards a mid-course brake run on the bridge. Ahead of you, the old horseshoe turn is still visible, which serves as a nice fake out. I was lucky enough to experience both versions of Mystery Mine. The drop in the older version was way stronger. The near vertical plunge off the bridge delivered some intense and powerful ejector airtime. It was a surprisingly potent moment for such a small drop. I loved it. The new drop is equally as tall, but it's less steep. It delivers a pop of airtime, but it's less jarring and strong than before. The new drop does have a trim on it, but I've never felt it hit. These two drops are the only good part about Mystery Mind's first half. The rest of the section is pretty awkward. After the second outdoor mid-course, you navigate a 270 degree spiral, a glacially slow bunny hill under the bridge, and an S-bend into a tunnel. All of these elements are super slow. They aren't the least bit thrilling. There isn't too much to look at either, and they're jerky. Anytime you change direction, even at the slow speeds, you can bang your head. Definitely lean forwards here. As before, skip ahead to the time shown on the screen if you want to avoid the spoilers as to what happens on the second indoor section. Mystery Mind then comes to a stop. You're in total darkness, but you'll hear vultures cawing. A light then flickers in front of you, revealing the second vertical lift, which takes you to the ride's max height of 85 feet or 26 meters. The music intensifies as you climb the lift hill, and you have a screen above your head showing the mine shaft collapsing. It's a much better visual than most vertical lifts where you're staring directly at the sun. At the top, you roll forwards and come to a stop. This next effect is the one that's the least reliable for me, which is a shame because it's easily the best one on the ride. You smell gasoline and then you get blasted in the face by a fireball, revealing a stack of dynamite. It is a really impressive visual and a cool effect. You then crawl forwards down the 95 degree beyond vertical plunge. The drop is partially illuminated by light that creeps into the shaft, but it's still pretty dark. The drop doesn't feel quite as steep as the other Eurofighters because it twists to the side on the way down. And the airtime isn't quite as intense as the others, but it still gives a nice pop of ejector airtime. When you emerge into the daylight, you navigate the ride's lone two inversions. Despite how suspect the track work is during Mystery Mind's first half, this section somehow manages to be smooth. You twist through a long uphill barrel roll and hang upside down for a few seconds as you enter the dive loop. These two elements deliver lots of hang time. It is the highlight of the ride for me, and it's certainly a memorable finale that redeems most of Mystery Mine. After sharply diving downwards, you hop up into the brake run. It gives a little pop of air time while also lurching you forwards, which can be a bit uncomfortable, so brace yourself. You then roll into the station, and depending how many trains Dollywood is running, you'll likely be stacked for a few minutes. So what would I rate Mystery Mine? I would give this weird Eurofighter a 7 out of 10. I love the theming during and around the attraction. It's probably the best themed thrill coaster at a Hershen Park. Then the ride's finale is spectacular, as it's a thrilling 10 second sequence that gets you out of your seat. It's one of my favorite finales of any coaster. But the ride's Achilles heels are the pacing and comfort. The outdoor first half is not good. I like the initial drop, but the rest of the layout just meanders while also causing headbanging. If Mystery Mine ever got lap bar only trains, I think my enjoyment of this ride would go way up. That would allow me to enjoy the theming and finale more rather than having to remember to ride defensively. Mystery Mine is an ambitious attraction. What it does well, it does really well. But where it struggles, it really struggles. So those are my thoughts on Mystery Mine at Dollywood. What are your thoughts on America's first Eurofighter? Which version of this ride do you like best? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.